Hey guys, welcome to another DPS training video. In this one, we're going to go over SiteWorks. So you're going to go ahead and load up that little plumb bomb icon on the bottom. You're going to open up Trimble SiteWorks, and we'll get started. Okay, the first thing it's going to show you is this open project menu. We're going to want to make sure we're on the right project. In this case, we're going to do Chick-fil-A Kaiser. Um, the work order is right now set on manholes, so I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and change that to site calibration. And I'm going to make sure that the design is the most current design. In this case, it's only the one, so we know it's the most recent. Go ahead and accept that. And now the next window is going to be this receiver setup. You'll notice that the mode says rover. But in this video, we're going to be showing you how to set up a base. So we're going to need to switch that mode to base. So what we're going to do is on the right side of the name, you're going to do the drop down and switch it to base. Now you're going to notice that right on a click base, it auto filled everything for me as if it remembered what we did before. Sometimes that's okay, as if you come to the same site multiple times, you can use this feature. But we're pretending as if we came to a brand new site and that information could be incorrect. So to save myself from any errors, I'm going to switch the connection type from Bluetooth to cable. And then I'm going to, it says COM port, I'm going to select one of these comms. Doesn't matter which one, typically I'll do COM17. And then it'll fail the system. So I say failed to connect to the receiver. The reason it failed is because we have no cables connected. Um, the, the way we typically connect is with Bluetooth. The only reason I'm saying cable right now is to make it get rid of all that auto-filled boxes. So now that when I switch it back to Bluetooth, so we'll go ahead and switch it back to Bluetooth. And here, just to save on error, we're going to scan for devices. So on the very far right, you'll see that Bluetooth icon. We're going to go ahead and click on that. So the reason for this while it's scanning is we want to make sure we connect to the right device. If we just go off of memory, it may be looking for a device that doesn't exist. It may be looking for a device that's not even turned on. So when we scan for Bluetooth devices, we know once it actually catches that device, it is talking to it correctly. Um, when you see it, it could pop up other devices like your phone or any other Bluetooth device in the area. So we're going to want to double check the information. All right, so we have the SPS 855 Trimble. Um, that is going to be our base. So the SPS 800 series is our bases. SPS 900 is going to be a rover head. So we're going to go ahead and click on this SPS 855. So it looks like I connected, and now it's going to ask for the correction method. We're going to do radio and receiver. And now it's going to ask for what network we're going to use, and we're going to use network 10. Here at Willamette Valley, we typically use network 10, unless there's conflicts for whatever reason. Say another civil excavation company is using GPS as well, and they're using 10 then we may need to switch it to another network. All right, now it's going to ask for the base position. And this is important. When you set up a base on a new site or any site, you're going to want to make sure that base position is a control point. Three options are going to be control point, latitude, longitude, height, and base anywhere. We're going to select control point. And when we do that, it's going to bring up the map view. And it's going to be backed up to that 1,000 foot scale. So we're going to need to zoom in a little bit. So on the far right, you're going to see this little magnifying glass with a box around it. Let's go ahead and select that, and then we'll drag with our stylus or our finger, and it's going to zoom us in a little closer to the job. And you'll see right off the bat, there's a point named Chick-fil-A. So most survey control points are going to be numbered, either like from 1 to 100 or 1,000, or it's going to be a number to it. So when we calibrate a site, however, we will create a control point and name it the job name. And so we right away know that Chick-fil-A is going to be our base position. So we're trying to tell our base where it's at. We have to let it know its position. And so what we're doing is saying its position is a control point, and that control point is going to be the name of the job. Now sometimes you're going to see this map view, and all you'll see are triangles for the control point. So there'll be no names next to it. So to get the name to pop up, we're going to hit this gearbox, the settings on the far right. This is going to pop up our settings. Now, right away, we're going to be the measure option, and there's going to be a, a selection named point names. If that's not selected, go ahead and select it. And then we'll hit accept. And then that would pop up all your control point names right on the map, so it'd be easier to see. You can also do this drop down menu. So, right up on the very top, it says point name, and it gives the name, the box for the control points. We'll do that drop down, and you'll see here. There are control points with numbers to them, and then there's one with a name of the job to it. So right off the bat, we know that that is our base position control point. All right, we're going to go ahead and accept that. All right, it's going to take us right back to the receiver setup. 
So we've given the base position as control point, and we've found it, and it's called Chick-fil-A. The next option is going to be the antenna, and that's going to be your dish that's on the base pole. Now that dish needs to be the Zephyr Geodetic Model 2, and you can do a drop down to see all the options, but we do want it to be Zephyr Geodetic Model 2, and if you need to confirm that ever, you can pull the dish off and look at the very bottom, and it will give you that name. The next option is going to be the measure method for that antenna, and we're going to say we want it to be at the bottom of the antenna and the vertical height zero. The next option is going to be the corrections, and we want that to be CMRX. There are two options here. You can see on the drop down, it'll say CMRX, CMR Plus. CMR Plus is more standard for survey equipment, and CMRX is more specific to Tremble products. Um, unless you have some conflicts going on, which is not typical, we use CMRX. It's going to be much more efficient, and it's a lower bandwidth signal. We're going to accept that, and it should try to finish our base setup. If we were successful on all our options, it's going to pop out this info, and it's going to show you your base name, it's going to give you latitude, longitude, height, and the radio that it's on. If this all comes back as zeros, you know you did something wrong, that the base is not set up properly. But if it does give you base longitude and latitude and the height, you're looking pretty good. It's going to send you back to the map view right away. So our base is set up. However, we're not getting any information on the top. It's not telling us you know, where we're at. We can't even see our icon. We have getting nothing. And that's because it's just the base that was set up, not the rover. So the base now knows what it's at. It's, it's shooting out a signal to any rovers in the area. But we need to set up our rover now. And in order to do that, we're going to hit the top left, those three lines for the menu on the top left of the screen. And we're going to hit the project setup. And now we're going to hit connect device. Now we're going to hit the GNSS, which is representative of GPS. And now we're back in that receiver setup that we originally saw at the very beginning of the video. Now this is good. We want the mode now to be rover. However, for just training purposes, I'm going to show you how to go through the options like I did with the base. Typically, you could just accept this autofill that's in. It just defaults to memory. This typically is correct, but just for um, training purposes, I'm going to go through the options real quick. So what we're going to do is the connection type. We're going to switch that to cable, just like we did for the base, and we're going to pick COM17. It's going to fail to connect to the server. And that's fine. Now we're going to switch it back to Bluetooth. We are going to scan for devices. And now remember, we're looking for the SPS 900 series. And here we go, SPS 986. We'll select that. It's going to try to talk to it. And now it's saying, what network are you going to try to find? And we're going to do network 10. That's what our base is running on. So in order to talk to it, we need to be on network 10. And as you see, it did find a base on network 10 called Chick-fil-A. And that's perfect, because that's the one we set up. We're going to hit OK on that. Now the next option is going to be quick release. Are you going to use quick release? We're going to say no. Here at Willamette Valley, we typically do not use quick release. What that is is an extension on your rover, how it connects to your rover rod. And if there's a little snap on, that's going to be called quick release. But that extends the rod up a little bit and adds some height. And so typically, if your rover head screws on, then you're not using quick release. So we are going to say no to quick release. Now it's going to ask for antenna height. This is going to be the distance from your rover head to the very bottom of your pole. Now that is typically 2 meters, and for Willamette Valley purposes, we're going to say always do 2 meters, 6.562 feet. Um, on your rods, when you extend it, there's going to be usually 3 notches, and the very top notch is going to be extended all the way to 2 meters. The other double check is on the rod, after you've extended it, there's going to be a label that says 2M, or 2 meters. Another quick thing is if for whatever reason this 6.562 gets deleted, and you forget what 2 meters is exactly, and you don't want to Google it, um, you can just type in 2M and hit accept, and Trimble will automatically uh, convert that to feet, to 6.562. We're going to go ahead and accept that. Now it's going to try to finish the rover setup, and it looks like we had success. You can already see on the very top, it's giving us some more information than we had before. It is going to ask us, do we want to, to check in on a control point? Um, I'm going to recommend that you always do, if possible. If there's a nearby control point, please check it in. Um, but even more importantly, when you're out on the field, you're going to periodically want to check on a survey hub to make sure you're in line with the on-site surveyors. They are kind of king for control out there, so we want to make sure that we are matching what they're seeing. So I would go to any survey hub if you can, has true elevation on the back, and you're going to check that. Or the other option would be um, look for like an existing curve or existing structure that has alignment. 
and check that your alignment, alignment is on as well. All right, so now you have set up a rover from scratch. Now, let's say we're coming back to the job the next day and we don't wanna go through all those options. We just want it to be quick setup. You're gonna open up Trimble Siteworks and it's going to give you the question of which job do you want to set up on. And we're going to do Chick-fil-A, site calibration, and the design. And it's going to take us to the receiver setup right away. And you can see the mode is rover. It's, it's asking us just to accept the default settings. And in this case, if we're revisiting the site, we can go ahead and just say accept. The base will already remember where it's at, and the rover will try to do the exact same setup that it did the day before. This is going to be the quickest way to set up every day. Um, You'll know really quick if it works because it's going to do this connecting method. And then if it says cannot connect or there are errors, you'll know that something's goofy and you may need to go through each option like I showed you, failing the system. But if it does work just fine, then I would say check in your control point like we talked about or find a survey hub and some true alignment. And you can feel pretty good about your setup and you can get to work. And that's it for this video on setting up a base and rover. I hope it was helpful for you guys and there'll be more videos in the future.